One of the features of being back in the long season of ordinary time is we begin to hear passages like this morning's gospel reading in which Jesus speaks in parables. These short metaphorical stories were a favorite way Jesus chose to share wisdom. The way parables work is that they take something familiar and then exploit that familiarity to suggest something unpredictable and surprising. When I think of unpredictable and surprising teachers that I've had in my life, my mind always goes back to one particular psychology lecturer. At seemingly random moments, this professor would throw some extremely colourful language into her lectures. And by colourful, I mean that she demonstrated a truly impressive creativity when it came to swearing. This is not a technique I have employed in sermon creation, although it is tempting. This particular teacher was a specialist in human memory. Her outrageous and, I'll admit, often entertaining swearing was something she did in order to make her classes more memorable. And it worked, because 25 years later, I can still remember all sorts of things that uh, this teacher imparted to me. In a similar way, Jesus embraced the subversive nature of parables because these stories would stick in people's memories. Subversive stories are often humorous in nature. When something in a story catches us by surprise, often our response to that surprise is laughter. This is how most jokes work. The premise of the joke suggests something mundane, and the answer takes us in an unexpected direction. The surprise is what gets the laugh. For example, why don't you ever see a hippopotamus hiding in a tree? Because they're really good at it. Okay, it's a bit of a groaner, to be honest. Another one. What's the leading cause of dry skin? Towels. Okay, that's a better one. I like that one better too. Not the best jokes. They're the only ones I know that I'm brave enough to use in a sermon. I do know quite a few jokes. The point is, we laugh because something unexpected happens. Many of the parables of Jesus operated in the same way. Jesus began with something ordinary and then used it to suggest something surprising. This is partly why these stories end up written down and recorded in the Gospel. The followers of Jesus remembered these stories, in many cases because they were humorous or surprising anecdotes. These were stories that would stick in the memory. So if parables were the mechanism, what was the message? Well, we assume that a parable of Jesus contains wisdom. It is not wisdom instantly available. These stories are not like Disney movies, where the moral of the story is laid out and obvious to anyone who watches it. The parable invites us into a familiar story, but then challenges us to find our own meaning in that story. Jesus clearly wanted his followers to think for themselves. We have a tendency at times to sanitize Jesus. 
We overlook the deeply subversive and often humorous way in which he taught. And we reinterpret his teaching in ways that are more comfortable and less challenging. But Jesus wasn't interested in making people comfortable. Rather, Jesus saw a world that was in desperate need of transformation. But more than that, Jesus dared to suggest that God is already engaged in that work of transformation and that we should be too. And to make that point clearer, we need to think a little more about the parable of the mustard seed. Where I grew up in Wellington, we had a problem with an invasive plant. The hills where I grew up, which used to be covered in all sorts of native and indigenous species, are now covered in gorse. As a child, I had many encounters with gorse, none of them pleasant. To this day, I still have very negative feelings about that particular plant. People in first century Palestine had fairly similar feelings about the plant known as mustard. Mustard, like gorse, is an invasive species. It is very hard to get rid of it once it has begun to spread. I can imagine the day when Jesus shared this parable. As the, as the disciples passed a field that had been overrun by mustard, Jesus pointed at it and said, look at that field. The disciples could see the mustard that prevented the field from producing any sort of crop at all. And then Jesus chimes in with, the kingdom of God is like the seed of that weed. It's tiny when you plant it, but look at it now. It covers the hillsides. It's taken over the paddocks. Once that weed takes root in even the smallest nook or cranny, there's no getting rid of it. The image Jesus uses is a little preposterous. And while we might not fall about laughing at his suggestion that God's work is like an unwanted, invasive plant, I suspect that the first people to hear this parable were at least a little amused by it. But the subversive nature of the story runs deeper than simply reevaluating our viewpoint on weeds. When Jesus speaks of the kingdom of God, he is making a direct comparison with the empire of Rome. Jesus was illustrating that God's action in the world is like an unwanted weed that undermines and transforms the world of emperors. In a country that supplied agricultural product to the Roman Empire, the suggestion that the kingdom of God is like a weed that inhibits agricultural productivity clearly adds a revolutionary message to this particular story. Jesus was telling his followers that they were to be like the weeds. And in many respects, they were like the weeds. They were the ones who didn't belong because they didn't fit the agenda of empire. Jesus was also suggesting that as good as the Romans were at shaping things to their liking and vision and purpose, God's love continues to break into the world, just like a weed that takes over the entire garden. 
Do we believe that love is like a weed that is determined to take root in our lives no matter how hard we try to pull it out? Do we think that love can be a corrupting influence, transforming what is claimed to be good into something better? Can you imagine being one of the weeds? A nasty nuisance that disrupts the comfortable lives of the powerful. It turns out that the surprises in this particular story are not ones that make us laugh for very long. The parables of Jesus call us into a divine playfulness that challenges and undermines the conventional wisdom of humanity. We are meant to be the weeds. We are called to grow in places where we are unwelcome and unwanted because those are the places that might be transformed by love. Uncontainable, irrepressible, abundant love.